guys, what's up? It's your girl Cameron, and I'm back with another pose review. And um, y'all know we was complaining about the tempo of the episodes the past two weeks, right? We thought it was a little slow, a little muted, a little like, okay, what's going on? I get like, what's going on? Um, and tonight, I just my back hurts. Like it, it almost felt like a Queen Sugar night, right? It just, it was intense really intense i was having heart palpitations and at my young age of 29 i feel 92. y'all we gonna go ahead and get into this review i'm camera this is camera music tv if you're new here make sure you subscribe down below to this channel hit the little bell if you want to be notified whenever i post anything i post videos every day a word of the day video every day i post my pose review every tuesday night which usually ends up being about Wednesday morning when you guys see it, and Queen Sugar reviews every Wednesday night, which usually be, ends up being Thursday morning when you guys see it. All right, uh, JTFIO podcast is also back, which is also, which is just trying to figure it out. So hashtag JTFIO that is back premieres every Wednesday at 12 p.m. on um, SoundCloud, YouTube, and the Apple Podcast app. Okay, so we got all the church announcements out the way. Let's go. Look, come on, come on, come on. Let's get into this. Ricky and Pray Tell are doing the do. Uh, you you know, Ricky has made all these advances at Pray Tell. Pray Tell has with you know stood in his elder position and been like, you know, this is a kid. Nope, I'm not even entertaining this. But something about this episode, you know, he's showing him, you know, you need to take this vitamin, that vitamin, because you need to suffice for what you're not going to have because you're losing the, you know, the T cells. And um, remember that Ricky, the type of person that Ricky is, is he equates sex with like, like, you know how people have their love languages, right? And words of affirm affirmation is like one of the languages. That's like his, his words of affirmation. When he feels like, you know, oh, you're comforting me. Oh, you're telling me something that I need to hear. Or you're showing that you care about me. Okay, sex. This is how I seal the deal. There is no in between with him. Um, so what, what, as I see it happening, I'm feeling like Praytel's not going to give in to this. He's going to do the elderly thing and be like, you know, come here. You're hurt. You're vulnerable. You know, you've you've never had anyone show you the the type of way that you should be loved, you know, from a father or from like someone who's elderly in the father position. Um, but Praytel didn't do that. Now, what I'm conflicted with is how I feel about it, because See, Praytel didn't, he didn't have no remorse the whole episode for what he did. He just kind of had remorse for the reactions of everyone and how it came out there. But he still wasn't really remorseful, right? He kind of felt like, you know, I've been doing the right thing. I've been standing by this man he died on, you know, then I found out I was sick. And then, you know, I've just been, you know, everything for everybody else. And I haven't, I haven't taken care of myself. And I deserve to be loved and lusted after and have a boo thing and whatever. And I don't think anyone's saying that. He doesn't deserve to have that. I just think it's this specific person. It's like even even aside from the how young he is, it's like 30, 40 year gap. Right. We're not we're not going to put that many um, that many years on Pray Tell. But this at least 20 year gap between the two. And then Pray Tell is like a fatherly figure for all of them. But aside, but, but aside from all of that, the fact that Damon and Pray tell are close, not, you know, not as close as Ricky and pray tell, but he knows that Ricky and Damon had a thing. And that was like Damon's first, like, you know, like, so he knows all of that. And so for pray tell to still get involved here, it's like the mind where, he, where he usually is so level headed and mature and, you know, um, stable he just was not in this decision. And so I'm thinking, you know, a fling or whatever. But then the way that he's carrying himself 
after hooking up with Ricky because y'all know it was a very sensual scene. Um, I'm proud of how far media has come to where we see two gay men on screen, you know, having having their sex scene, but then two black gay men on screen having their sex scene. So, you know, that just lets you know um, having their sex scene. Uh, <laughs> acting out a sex scene, but that just lets you know um, the evolution and the growth um, in our society and in media today, even though we, we got a long way to go, but there's growth, right? And so, um, I forgot where I was going before that. I just think, oh, his, his glow, the way that he's acting. So, you know, after they, they hook up, you know, I mean, it was a passionate, a passionate hookup. The next day, Pray Tell is glowing. He has the yellow on. He's gliding through the streets. And you know, don't don't nobody know you like your clique of homegirls. And they can always tell when you got the glow from the D, okay? And that's what's occurring here. Okay, Pray Tell. I'm feeling like, okay, Pray Tell, this is a, this is a little, you know, embarrassing, honestly, because you're older, so you know you. If you had a hookup, fine. But the way that he's wearing it all over himself is just like, boo! Like your slip is hanging. Your slip is hanging. I mean, I was worried that you know. Obviously, Ricky has so much respect for Pray Tell, and this is what I wanted to say too. Pray Tell's blurring some, not Pray Tell. Ricky's blurring some lines because on one hand he looks up to Pray Tell for you know the mentorship. <coughs> The mentorship and guys these allergies <clears throat> he looks up to pray tell for the mentorship and the um, you know teaching him a new way of things and um, ph like philosophy on different things and how to do things and then um, he looks up to him in this fatherly figure and then somebody who's funny and then someone who you know so they look up to pray tell they look up to Blanca they look up to Electra in a weird way um, so for him to look up to him and then like be flirting with him because that's what he associates with like, I don't know, I, I'm, I know I'm on the road, like I kind of got it, but I don't have the right words. But he's like tying that into like attraction and then trying to like throw himself at him like, to, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying because I've seen it in a lot of other situations. So, um... And just like the friend, Manhattan, said, he said, you know, a lot of guys, a lot of young gays, they're thrown out by their families, you know, spat on by their families and talked down upon. And then they cling to the elders for guidance and love and all that. So, of course, they fall in love with us because they've been pushed out by their fathers. And I said, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Because, you know, what Ricky needs is that father figure, but he's been cast out by his father. So then when he meets someone who's potentially his father's age, he crosses the wires. Okay, um, how do y'all feel about Ricky and Pray Tell? They seem like this is like they're, they're staying together. Because, you know, Damon's leaving. It seems like it, it's like they're settling in that. Because when uh, Pray Tell woke up after his after he drunk himself to sleep, he said, "Oh, you're still here in the morning." I'm thinking, first of all, where Pray Tell, where Ricky gonna go? He's not like a man your age who has like a a full apartment that he could go to. Okay, he's there with you, which is another thing. He's kind of there with you because he don't have nowhere else to go or nowhere else that he'd rather be. You know, you make him feel comfortable, or whatever, with you know your own space. So it's kind of like. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. I hope y'all are getting what I'm trying to say. So, um, I keep losing my train of thought. Oh, what do y'all really think that he's like, that they look good together? Because, you know, he's, he made him coffee, he made him breakfast. He's giving him the, you know, the ibuprofen or a leave and he's clearly like holding his hand and it's looking like they're settling into each other and the idea of each other. And anyone who has a problem with it, they've cut ties with, even though they, exi they exist in the same world. So I don't know, like, I don't like the situation because it's too much of a, like, too much st extra stuff. It's not like you just met a younger dude at the ball. 
It's not like that. You are have directly been affected by Ricky. So I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Like you have direct influence as a father figure on him in all of these past situations. So I don't know how I feel about that. But y'all let me know down in the comments what you think about Pray Tell and Ricky. Do you think they deserve a shot? Or do you feel just like me? Pray Tell was dirty. Just dirty. All these men out here. And because Ricky was just so charismatic, you know, he happened to be the one to get it. All right, so um, we see that Damon is finally ready to give Ricky a chance, right? And this is, there's a term for this in writing or in movies um, or shows, but it's, it's like the audience knows one thing and the character is, doesn't know, okay? So basically, you know, he's telling Ricky he's ready, he's giving him a kiss, and then, you know, this is when Ricky has to tell him that he's not, one, HIV positive, two, uh, pray tell been teaching him some things. Now, what irritated me was I wanted him to say the words, say exactly what it was. I have to talk to you. I found out I was HIV positive. You know, I went to pray tell about it because because uh, pray tell is also HIV positive. He's helped me out with things. We ended up hooking up. I liked it. I potentially I see us going somewhere. I'm sorry, you know, but Ricky ain't that mature. He's just not that mature and a lot of a lot of men ain't. But I think if he would have phrased it like that, then Damon would have had some understanding of what's going down and not so much resentment and this blow up after the graduation would not have went down. And maybe it still would have went down because Angel was she was off her rocker. All right. Um, so let me see, let me see, let me see. What I was confused about and what I asked on Twitter was, I thought that Damon had already got tested, gotten tested after Ricky came back from the tour. Cause I feel like, I feel like it's, it's some stuff in there that's getting lost. And I don't know if it's because we had all these episodes basically like on break from the storyline from like Ricky and Damon like I done forgot some details or if there's like some flaws and some holes in the story R tell me if I'm wrong and I know y'all will I feel like Ricky and Damon hooked up unprotected Blanca found out they go get tested Ricky leaves for um for the tour he comes back um, they hook up again, Blanca finds out, I feel like they got tested again. Am I wrong? I feel like they got tested again, and then that's, that is the time that Pray Tell found out that he had it, and then he came out and said that he didn't have it. And then he ended up telling Blanca later on, and then um, uh, Damon finds out that that uh, Damon, not Damon, that Ricky was cheating. I feel like that's how the story went. So technically, they got tested twice, and technically, Damon never got with Ricky after he was with Chris. So I'm confused why Ricky had to tell Damon. And I feel like I'm going to have to go back and watch the episodes because I don't remember exactly which episode it was. But I don't. I feel like there's a hole in the story. So y'all let me know because I, I, I really feel like there's a hole in the story. Alright, so Damon's graduating. Super happy for Damon because he's the first one out of the bunch to get a degree. The teacher... I don't know who wrote for this teacher. Obviously, I mean, first of all, she's a great actress. So as she's speaking, I feel the words and I'm just like, oh, she probably smells like shea butter, vanilla and like papaya or pineapples or something like she just looks like just so loving. Right. Um, but whoever wrote for her, I just love the way that she was speaking about Blanca. And, you know, they had that connection. I love that part. But then we get to this blow up of an after party at the house. I don't know what's going on with Angel, but Angel's, she's clearly drunk, high, both of them, uh, or jealous, one, I don't know. But her and Damon start going back and forth. It's like a tennis match. They talk, you talk, they talk. Oh, no, don't say that. Oh, no, she didn't. Oh, yes, he did. And they going back, and I'm just like, 
on Twitter like, Jesus, don't nobody slip up and say nothing. We don't need no slip ups here. Because at first Blanca thought it was playful banter and then it started getting a little personal. Okay, so they're going back and forth. Pray tell is looking like he got some words to say and I just was like, pray tell, you might want to keep it cute and on mute. Okay, the fact that pray tell should, I was just shocked that pray tell was even there. Because you got some nerve because you ain't even talked to Damon yourself. And that was another thing I felt like. You know, you're the elder. You're the one who is who is sowing into these kids' life and giving advice and, you know, being the father figure. So why is it that you could not have pulled Damon to the side and said, listen, I'm sorry if this hurts you, but this is what it is. Especially if you felt like you ain't do nothing wrong. So I just thought it was real, like, messed up that he didn't pull Damon aside. So this big blow-up moment. Electra tripping me out. She, the comedic relief, she needs some Remy Martin. Girl, it, it, it just, I just was like, I was not ready. Okay? Damon exposes Angel. Blanca don't believe that Angel doing the drugs. And she clearly looks like she's, like, cracked out. Okay, she wasn't rocking that lovely eyeshadow she be rocking. You know, we see Poppy, he wants to get her a place or whatever. And this is why in the end, when she's talking to Blanca about letting her go, I was like, you only saying that because you got a place to go. So there's a lot of holes as we're wrapping up and I, it was just irritating. But this, this blow up at the table was genius. It was genius. Because on one hand, pray tell, is he's preaching, okay? Don't you dare talk to your mother like that when she's provided you even a way, you know, because Damon, he didn't have to work at all. Excuse me. Blanca created a way for Damon to be out here, you know, doing his, his dream. As long as you stay focused, you go to class, I got everything else. And the thing is, because she did that, you know, Damon was able to graduate. And so Pray Tell's letting him know, like, you cannot just be out here talking to her any old kind of way when she's provided a way for you. But the thing is, Pray Tell, you cannot be speaking life and truth and preaching to anybody when you're in the wrong, too. So this big blow up, you know, Electra and Blanca are like, you are an elder. And for you to do this, this is the number one rule in the community in the ballroom scene. And Pray Tell did not have no remorse. He didn't have no remorse. And that's the part that just like blew my mind. Like he did not once sit down and say, you know what, y'all are right. It's not like that. One thing led to another. Now he said that when he was talking to Blanca on the street. But it's like in that moment, instead of being like, you know what, I feel y'all. It was not, it, I didn't mean for it to go this way, but now that I've thought about it, you know, like, it was none of that. And I just was like, bro, what in, what in all, what in the world? What in the world? Let me, let me see what else is going on with these notes. Okay, the only other thing that I want to talk about is this whole mothering thing with Blanca, right? Blanca, we know, we love Blanca because she puts her all into her kids. Okay, she encourages the dreams and she nurtures and she gives discipline and she's also giving the leg up and positivity and dreamers and believe and, and hope and she gives all that for her kids, right? Um, and she even has her own nail salon, but most of the time she is busy in stealing these things in her kids and raising her kids and, you know, uplifting her kids and all of that. So now that her kids are equipped with all that, I don't know how Angel is equipped because she strung out and that was another thing. I was like, Blanca, why you didn't spend more time on the fact that Angel is cracked out? Why we didn't spend more time on that? You know, Poppy's gotten this place for them to live or whatever. But I'm like, she's only moving out because she has a place to go. You know, it's it, it, like, come on. Like, you're accepting your whooping. It's like saying, yes, go ahead and whoop me. And you got, like, pillows in, in your pants or something. Like, you're already equipped for your punishment. Okay, so I, I didn't really like that part. I felt like Angel, she didn't really get it as good as I needed her to get it. The way that Ricky got it. The way that Poppy got it. You know, everybody else got it. All right, so, um... Let me see, let me see. 
I keep getting lost and this light is blinding me. Why do I keep getting lost? Okay, so the whole mothering thing. You know, Electra says something in the end where she's like, you know, if you want gratitude, get yourself a dog. We mother and we raise these kids, and then we get some new kids, and we mother them, and we raise them. Um, they say um, in different podcasts and books and TV shows that I've seen, interviews I've seen, you know, they talk about parents or married couples who they raise their kids, and you know, they're so concerned about the kids, and then when the kids leave the house, they end up getting divorced because they can't stand to be around each other. They don't have nothing to concern themselves with. Um, and so that just kind of makes me think about this situation. Blanca put so much into her kids that she didn't really have much for herself or have anything going on for her. Now she did have her nail salon, which I think is a good thing, but it was very hard for her to unlatch from her kids and let them go because she had put so much in them and she had attached herself and aligned herself with so much that was going on with them. Is it good? Is it bad? I mean, I feel like good mothers do do that. But then I also feel like, like Electra said, you have to raise adults, not parasites, like she said. Um, and that was a good point. You know, um, I don't have any children, but I do know that you know, when you are attached, just like I, I used to teach those students, I'm still cool with them to this day. And that's because, you know, we have this connection, mentorship and step and, you know, all these things with these kids. And then you watch them grow and then you're there for advice and then you're there for laughs and you're there for sadness and you're there for to watch them reach their goals and watch them walk across the stage. And it's like when you have to do that again to someone else, you're just like, oh, no, these kids, these kids. But they're not kids anymore. They're grown. And so your influence, the power that you have can be used elsewhere. And I don't know if Blanca's going to realize that. Now, I thought that season was going to end right here. Zilch, we're done. Would have made sense. But it also kind of looked like the wrapping up of the entire show instead of just the season. So I understand that they have to create somewhere for us to go. So they're going to have a girl's trip. What I'm wondering is where is everybody getting all this money from? That's what I'm wondering. Okay, so that was this week's um, review of Pose, season two, episode number eight. You guys let me know down in the comments what you thought about this week's episode. It was a lot to talk about. A huge change from the past two weeks, y'all. It was dying. It was slowly dying, but I guess it was to prepare us. I mean, I got back and neck pain. I mean, ch like my chest hurts. That was a lot, but I'm totally full. I'm totally full. Give Billy Porter his things. Give Billy Porter his things. Damon, I, d I don't know his real name. He retweeted my tweet tonight, and I can't remember his real name. You dance down. Ricky, you dance down. You guys are all doing a great job on this show. I'm going to be so sad when it leaves. Um, what else do I got? I, I don't know about reviewing a black lady sketch show. I love tweeting with you guys, um, but I don't really know how to review a sketch show. I just will say that I'm very proud of Robin Thede and Issa Rae for doing that show. And I've heard that they are now shooting Insecure, so everybody can calm down. We're going to have Insecure next year. All right, so I'm Cam Ray. This is Cam Ray Music TV. Make sure you guys handle all that stuff down in the links in the description box. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!